Executive Order, the Greg Stoney Commission, 105 p.m. February 6th, Stanton Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll. John, here. Dale, here. Ron, here. Sean is gone, Troy's here. We're gonna have to do it without him. We can patch him in, but he never actually was fun, so. Mm -hmm. Go on. Okay, take a look at the agenda. If anybody has any additions. Been moved by Dale to approve the agenda as presented. Is there a second to the motion? All seconded. Seconded by Ron. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, move into approval of the minutes for the January 23rd meeting. mistake um, with the agenda with there is the addition of the extension agent and then I have motion by seven to accept the agenda as presented and it should be amended. All as amended, sure. Anybody else have anything on your minutes? Moved by Ron to approve the minutes as amended and dispense with the reading. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Um, next thing on the agenda is the February bills and February vouchers. And we have the vouchers up here if anybody would like to see any of them. Looks like a bunch of these are going to fund budgets. Say that again. A bunch of them are transferred. Um, a few of them, yeah. No, the social services one. Uh, 
That's what the HS is. Or what, what's that big one? Um. Human Services Transfer. Yeah, there you go. That's what I was thinking. What's BP? I don't know. Uh, Brian Piper. Oh. What's that? He's got a T125, the cafeteria. I see. Brothers, that's a war some royalties, I presume. Yeah. <coughs> An agreement with them to pay five thousand per year for four years. Oh. <coughs> so <that's it. coughs> they didn't want all the money at once. So. $105 to West Street for? Um, he went to a training. So is this being expenses from the training or is this uh, additional wage or what is it? Um, that, I think he paid for his stuff and then we're reimbursing him. Okay. You believe? Paying the Lauderdale bill out of regional corrections. Says regional corrections. Yeah, that, no. And then that's prisoner meal, so it should have been down on Pizza Ranch. You keep them cuffed when you take them to the Pizza Ranch, or do you like <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Anybody have any questions? See the National Association of Counties. We got another dues there, the yeah. 450. <clears throat> what does the National Association of Counties do for us? 
send us a newspaper that time. Uh, that's the one we agreed to pay the dues last time, didn't we? North Dakota. Well, that's what this that's is. Right? Yeah, it's nice to see Oh, this. Yeah, I don't know what that is. That's like the federal. Yeah, we get that new that. Yeah, that is pretty ruthless. Yeah. If you are in a highly populated area, Montana's in the middle of the for a period of the Yeah, I just throw it in the trash immediately. County news? What's that? Is that that county news? NACO. National Association of Commons. What do we get for them? I don't get anything. I mean, I'm, I get that newsletter. Yeah. That yeah. little newspaper. I think that's the National Association of Counties, isn't it? I don't know. Do they do you Sometimes any good? Sometimes they lobby in Washington for certain funding bills for counties. They do that with all of us. They do that with all of us. We still do that. Maybe. 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 Um, and on the uh, North Dakota Commissioners Association, the one that you guys uh, wanted to be taken out of, um, we called them to let them know that we were that you guys wanted to be excluded, and they have never had any commissioner not be a part of it, and so they didn't know how to go about doing this. They'll figure it out. And so <laughs> Lori has been trying to get a, um, in touch with the president of the place. So. So we'll get a reward. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So that's we're in the process. Well, of if we don't if we don't pay, we don't care if we don't take it over there. <laughs> we say that we don't have to pay. If never any way to do it, huh? No. Well, that's not saying much for our politicians. But... They were just stunned when Lori. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm quite sure it'll be some kind of reward for us. <laughs> we'll make a call for them. <laughs> reward her <or> call team. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't see any reason to be in the National Association of Colonies either. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't Any other questions on the vouchers? Mm -hmm. No, I, I move we pay all the bills other than the National Association of Counties, and, and I would further move that we just exclude ourselves from that organization. I think you will if you don't pay the dues. <laughs> Been moved by John to pay all the bills, excluding the National Association of County dues. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. John? Aye. Dale? Aye. Ron? Aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carries. You want to, should we put these guys next? Sure. They're only jumping one agenda, agenda you know. Where do you guys want to? Yeah. Might as well. Yep. Yeah. Nope. Well, of course, it doesn't matter. You're in charge. Jenny? What do you have on the computer? The agenda. Oh, okay. So far. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Jenny with us. Hey, how's really? <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> okay, we've got two letters 
Uh, one, they're both final acceptance letters. One is addressed to the district, Grand Forks district, and that one is for your Seacoke project from last year. The second letter is the one that's addressed to Brian Keith, and that one is for your Sutton Road um, overlay and last culvert project. Both of these are letters just stating that the, essentially the county is aware of the projects, has seen them, the project work is completed, and you are accepting the work. Um, it's just a kind of a, a formal letter that they like to see in the final record. Um, so we just need a motion to send those? Yeah, essentially the seal coat project, Wayne had attended a uh, final inspection acceptance. Sean, yeah, and that was in November. And we go over the Sutton project, and then we met with Ken Tavish, up by Ben for the Red Bull project, and the line going across the Bitford. It seemed like everything was going well. Yeah, so we just need to send it to the Sutton Road Board and get that done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a motion to that effect. Satisfaction with these uh, highway projects to uh, Mr. Tavish and Mr. Hughes. Been moved by Dale to uh, send these letters from the county to the regional and state DOT. Is there a second to the motion? All seconded. Seconded by Ron. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, next one. Now, the next item we had, I believe PLJ had an invoice for engineering on uh, the final records for the Sutton Road project. I believe that was price paid at the last meeting, so this is a reimbursement request for that invoice. That was Thank you guys already. The invoice amount was $7,967.59 and the reimbursement request is 90% of that for $7,170.80. Okay. I move we submit to the North Dakota Department of Transportation for our reimbursement for the Sutton Road project in the amount of uh, $7,107.82. Dale has moved that we request reimbursement for the engineering costs on the Sutton project in the amount of $7,170.83. Is there a second to the motion? All seconded. Seconded by Ron. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? See none, we'll proceed to vote. John, aye. Dale, <coughs> Ron, aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carries. I guess the only other thing I'll fill you guys in is Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess just some quick just project updates for you guys. The 2014 seal code, the one with the acceptance letter. I'll get that sent into the district. The rest of that final, the records and everything, final estimates been prepared, that's all into the district. The district then, um, the district then reviews that and then as they will sign off on it. And once they've gotten through their review, then the final estimate gets submitted and paid to the contractor. So that's in their hands at this point. The Sutton Road overlay project, 
We still have some outstanding missing items from the contractor, so we are continuing to harass them for that. At some point, if there's a, a couple certifications that they still haven't gotten us, so we'll have to talk with them. So if they don't submit them, then we won't pay them for a few of the items. So, but we're trying to get that resolved because they've got you know eighty thousand dollars of retainage sitting out there that we'd like to get. Well, I'm not sure they'd like to get paid, but we'd like to pay so we can get that project closed out and get the final reimbursements done so that project can be closed. So that's where that's at. The seal coat project for this year, the 2015 one, um, the environmental document was submitted and preliminary plans were submitted uh, last week. The um, DOT, Brian Fuchs, reviews them and they've gotten us comments. They have just a couple minor comments on the the way a PDF was printing. Um, we also send those into the district, which your district is Grand Forks, and then they'll get us comments, and then Wayne and I are looking through the plans too to see if there's anything else we need to do with that. Final plans are um, slated to be submitted at the end of February, and then that one will be in a made bid letting. So that's where that one's at. <coughs> the only other project we've got really active is the Cedar Graveling Project, uh, east and west of Hannaford. Right now, we're just kind of waiting for spring to come. I'm sure lots of people are waiting for that. Mm -hmm. um, so probably in one of the next couple of meetings here, we'll bring a contract for the construction engineering. I'm still trying to figure out what we have to do on that because it seems kind of silly to have to do construction engineering on a graveling project. But we'll have to at least collect some tickets so we can pay them and do some materials testing. So. We'll get that figured out and get that to one of the next couple meetings here, so that way when Gilbertson gets back, um, I think he's going to have his stockpiles getting ready there. So we'll be doing some testing before they start graveling. So, where are they going to take that ground? They're not. Are they taking that out of red sauce? He thinks he's going to. He thinks it's, thinks it's going to pass because they've all rocked from Heinz. He's put over there, and questioning the fit. But KLJ will get some samples and check from that. Yep. <clears throat> I think you're going to dig through the whole pile, somewhat like maybe? Yeah. Different we, spots? Well, usually when you sample, you have to take your loader and pull off so you get a good representative sample of it. But Tom's been in, Tom Gilbertson's been talking with us and wants to make sure we get a sample before and so everybody's fine with material and, and that. So. And weren't they initially going to pull that out of uh, Mueller's? Yeah. If, if this doesn't work, then they'll probably get that out of Mueller's. So. Because they the first time they first pile they put up there too didn't wasn't class thirteen. <clears throat> but uh, they made a pile in class thirteen afterwards after that. So, so that's really the projects we have going on. Um, Wayne and I are talking a little bit. There's as these final bills come in for the projects that are using that house bill money from last year, we still it's, it's great that the, the bids came in really well on that graveling project, but it still left us with this small amount of money to try and figure out what the heck to do with it. So as we nail that down, we and I are thinking of some options. Maybe it's a matter of even just adding a half an inch of gravel to that project or doing something. So we're going to come up with some options over the next couple of weeks and bring that to you guys here okay. to talk about. So. We have received uh, 1771000 Sixty-nine dollars and thirty-six cents of reimbursements. The hospital. At this point. And we had just under one point nine million. That's what you have. So you got about one hundred and twenty or one hundred thirty thousand potentially. I just want to uh, remind everybody on February twelfth, there's the North Dakota Truck Weight Education Program. It's in the here. Um, 8.30.03. I have three guys signed up for it, although Brian has been having some medical problems and he scheduled a doctor's appointment for that day, so I'm going to have to substitute somebody else. But I, Gary Barberg, Ken Sandvik, and Brian to attend that because they're the major haulers. Um, so looking for an equipment operator that it has in the paper. I've got one, uh, <clears throat> one application returned. And I'm week of him tomorrow in Bedford. So. 
I'm not knocking my door at all. I see Steel County has one advertised too, and Barnes County is open for one. So. Um, that's about it. My eye, I can see. <laughs> that's quite a deal when you have a detached retina and uh, this black veil starts coming from the bottom up. And uh, I was told a few years ago, I noticed I had some like lightning flashes and stuff. My eye, <coughs> she checked at that time, Kathy Hendrickson, she said, well, part of the inner liner of the eye is starting to drop down. And she said, if you ever see that this black mm -hmm. curtain starts coming up, you have only so long to get it fixed. So Penny said she gave a report on it. <laughs> Stick a needle in your eye and put a little gas bubble in there and mm. yeah. lay in the right direction so the bubble floats up and pushes that mm. skin back in and then they take a laser stick in there and weld the two holes shut. Mm. <laughs> I didn't tell them the details. Straight after so, lunch. Anyway, I can see 2030 there right now. Probably better so. That's all I have, I guess. Hey, does anybody have any questions for me? Been a great winter. Save a lot of money. Feels so cheap hell for us to burn them up. They are burning some up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you repair it, we're doing a lot of repairing. So. What kind of trouble is Brian having? Brian's having, well, when he went on that trip to Washington, on the way back, he just all plugged up. Uh, he ended up in the hospital with uh, pneumonia. He can't figure exactly what's wrong. He's been to different specialists and everything, and all they finally found that he has a staph infection of a certain type that is resistant to all antibiotics except this one that they've discovered. It was like $1,500 for a little bottle and the insurance doesn't pay for it. Um, well, they said they couldn't afford it. They talked to the people and then they thought, well, we can give, give it to you for $150. <laughs> it takes a long way to <laughs> take the margin <laughs> off us. <laughs> uh, they decided to tell him he can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't remember this. But they said he's got asthma, and maybe he does. He's got some allergies. Uh, he's been supposed to go to this on the 12th to uh, Susan Matheson. She has that catalyst. Uh, I've been there. Since My ear, nose, I've been and there too. Yep. And ear, and nose, and throat clinic. Yep. So hopefully it can get straightened out. Anyway, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I forgot about that meeting last night. I don't know if you were at the, the multi hazard with you guys. Oh, good. We mitigated a bunch of stuff. Uh -huh. We mitigated a bunch of stuff. All right, thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Monthly office report. What on the daily cash balance, or maybe you know, what CL of CT bank forward account? Yeah, I, I see the bit, so I see the amount. What, what, what does that stand for? Uh, where are you looking? CL of CT bank forward account on the daily cash oh. balance at $11,000 a year. Court, 
clerk of court has her own checking account? Um, yes, I do believe so, because I have to sign some checks for, for uh, um, Kelly every once in a while. So they might. <clears throat> Is that, do all departments have their own checking account? Or? No. Just both people? I think so. <laughs> so do we, when there's a check written on that account, or do we get to, do we okay that first? Um, I don't think, those ones don't come to you guys, I don't think. I think those ones are for, um, if somebody pays a fine and then they get off or something, then they get reimbursed. I think that's what that is. But I could be totally wrong. They're still county funds though, aren't they? <clears throat> you have to sign the checks. Mm -hmm. What do you sign blank checks and then she comes and gets you to sign some more or she brings you checks that are already No, written? she brings me the checks that are already written. What's that checks on hand? What's that mean? Where do you see that? Right below the clerk of court. I don't know. Let me grab, let me get Connie to come up here. Because she would be able to tell you more than I would, I think. The only thing really that I know about this is when I do my end of the month, I use the, um, on the top, the 2013, or the 14, 13, and 12 for my stuff. And then when I, when we check miscellaneous receipts, I use the total collections number, but that's about all I know. So which is the account that the general fund and all the rest of them are written out of? Well, citizen state is a payroll. Yep. That's those checks yep. 6889 to 6897. Main Bank forward looks like the general funds, mm -hmm. and then first financial, AFLAC, VALIC, nation, nationwide, state tax, and and we must not see those either. Uh, those are at right at the top of your bills. Those are those get paid with payroll. If you see at the top, that's where all that stuff comes out of. And then with all the um, yeah. AFLAC, BALIC, This stuff all come out of bank forward. Right. This first financial thing, yeah, that's that, AFLAC, BALIC. I think those are all out of the, the same bank as, as the general because I 
write those checks just like I write everything else. If you know what I mean. But the check numbers are 2749 and 2750. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't match the payroll check. Payroll checks were 65. Yeah, those, the actual payroll is a different one. I know that. But like the Valak, Affleck, and Nationwide and that kind of stuff, those come out of the same one. How come they're not in here then? Those are go to Griggs County because they're, um, they get paid online. And so then we just pay Griggs County for them. Hi there. Somebody asked Connie what the clerk of court checking account was for. Um, they, it's not actually, it's a clerk of court checking account. I have to keep track of their balance and they use it for anything that, um, if they have to, well, she has to pay the counties fees out of that and she pays the state treasurer fees out of it and then all the fines and things they collect go into that. They used to go through the county until about two or three years ago, maybe four now, and then the state changed everything and um, so now basically I just have to keep it on my ledger. I don't have any other responsibility for it. Right, because the clerk of court is a, is a state's business. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. But because it's under the county's clerk of court, it has to be in our bookwork. So who funds it? Or is it just an in and out account? It comes Basically in, in and out. All the fees come in and she sends them out. But she can't send them out until someone in the court orders, which is why there's still so much in it. I see. And what's that checks on hand? That's the checks that were collected up to that point that hadn't been deposited yet. Yeah, oh, that's just a daily thing. Yeah, they've been posted against the taxes. It's just that they haven't gotten to the bank yet. They're still being held I see. Mm -hmm. These, and I know I've asked you this question before, these starred payments? Mm -hmm. No, Samantha took a real stab at it. Those are electronic payments? Right. That are actually done by the auditor's office. Okay. But they come out of that bank forward account? No, those are out of First Financial. There's two lines there for First Financial, isn't there? Yep. The retirement does come out of, that's on the bank forward. The ND loss. purse. Yep, the ND purse. That one comes out of bank forward. And that's an electronic payment. What's that ACH in citizens? That's payroll. Oh, you're you, do, you do electronic payroll. Okay. Not for everybody, though? No, there's a few that don't have direct deposit. That's I why there's some money. check numbers? Great. I wanted to make it mandatory, but they went to that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too late. No, is it? No, is it? Remember at Cheyenne Valley when we did that? We took a show of hands and we weren't going to do it both ways. So most of the people wanted it electronic, so everybody got it electronic. I mean, it's a hassle to do it both ways.
However, she's one of the ones who gets an actual check, so you might want to ask her what the benefits are. <laughs> Put her on the spot, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see that one. <laughs> <laughs> so you take your wages in cash? No. I get a check. It's just a piece of paper. And you hand it to the teller? Or do I have a checking account? No, I do. I think what I do is I, I keep it and then for as long as I can and then I'll deposit it because then it's closer to the next day. Self-regulating. I mean, if it goes right in, then it's there and I can just spend it right away. <laughs> One way to compensate for lack of willpower. <laughs> That's good. Anytime you're going to be thrifty, then get well, well, maybe, maybe we should think about that till next meeting. Maybe we we'll get a list of the, of the numbers. To I mean, how many? It doesn't have to be their names, but how many people do well, thrift positive? Can, how many? You can tell. Yeah. Uh, everybody gets like an actual check number, but I think there's six of us that regularly get a paycheck and age when it's um, social service board board members. Because then there's two board members that get an actual check, and then there's six of us that actually just all the time get an actual check. All of 30? Around there, yeah. You lose. Too bad, so sad. Okay, any other questions on that cash balance or spreadsheet? Anything else on the monthly reports? Um, I see the weed report in here. Did you guys get any help from the state on that thing? Yep, we did get that put in. Good work. Yep, Lori did amazing. All right. She was asking me questions I couldn't answer, so I had to. <laughs> How long do we let the highway department build some of these <laughs> that haven't been collected been on there since we started just about? Before the do a separate board? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the, what the uh, protocol that might be. I can answer that. If you want. Oh, I'm sorry. At least two of them I know that have been on there. Um, Christy has contacted, well, actually she contacted back in 2013 and the beginning of 14, the state's attorney's office, and they were starting to collect. Some are collected, but you're going to do small things. Okay. We can't just assess it to their taxes. I asked Wayne to find that out, so I don't know if we can or not. Because they do that if somebody doesn't mow the roadside. Exactly. I mean, it goes here first. And I know one of those people who heard is building a new house, so I couldn't pay his bill. I don't know. <laughs> He's paid up. Mm -mm. Huh? Doug Shoe? Oh, I don't know him. I don't either. Just Somebody said Cole was building a new house, and I just see it. he paid his bill. So. Oh. Where's Doug's shoe from? <laughs> What's that? Greg's County. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I'm, I don't know. There's up east of Greg's County, and then there's Okay, anything else?
accept the monthly office report. It's been moved by Dale to accept the monthly office reports. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second it. Seconded by Ron. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Travis Palm. Travis called earlier this week and talked to Samantha, who called me. And he's thinking about this courthouse. And I didn't know what to tell him, and I still don't, so we can find I'm basically kind of want to form you too as far as where I'm sitting at, as far as what's left in the project, you know, um, you know, how is it going to be progressing, so that you guys have a full picture as far as what, what kind of timeline we need to get our work done in there as well, too. So, you know, like I said, the courtroom video system that we have to install, that requires work in the ceiling, so either scaffolding or, or a man lift, which we don't want to have any, any flooring down when we're doing that stuff. And there's other equipment we could be we could be working on to get it get it done so it's ready to go when it actually does move in. So and you guys all received that that email yet last night and the breakdown I guess as far as the information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know that we can go working in there. Well, <clears throat> that's part of we can work in the EOC portion of it, but the, you know, the, uh, the other, the courthouse, courthouse portion of it isn't under our control. You know, it's a different funding source. Oh, okay. So, yeah. You know, it's a building authority that, that the building authority actually owns the whole building. So, <sighs> Troy's right. Can we go work in there? I'm not sure. So I, I guess the answer, uh, I mean, I, I don't know what we can, I, I don't think we can authorize moving forward at all until we get some kind of guidance. On There's some med the mediation is scheduled for March 3rd. Okay. You know, at the, nobody else is going to do anything before then either. Yeah, no, but like really this is kind of, I want to get you guys up to date as far as what, what we have sitting still and kind of what, uh, what needs to be done yet, so. That way too, when you're informed and actually that stuff starts moving forward, you can, you can when you actually know, you can give me the great green light and go forward from there, I guess, so. Then that didn't have, none of this work had a definite funding source, correct, Ron? This was all funded under FFP? I believe so. Right. Yeah, the, the, this stuff, yeah. The, uh, the, the actual installation of the wire that was put out to bids and that was separate from this work here. And so this is the networking, wireless, and actual equipment, and so forth. But so I think it was all FFA. Yeah, yeah, I think so as well. Yeah. So as it stands right now, there isn't any money for the FFA. Okay. And so to actually move forward with it until we get some further direction on how this is going to go, there's been no money. You know, FFA was just a floating number mm -hmm. and uh, as we go through this there's there's been money spent outside of the the two budgeted items which was the construction engineers and the architect was any of this part of that courtroom grant yes the courtroom video system is part of that grant so i believe that's a 75 percent is that correct so uh -huh. so there is a funding source for that when we get to the point where we know how to proceed with the whole project. But again, that's in the courts. I mean, yeah, that's, that's and the, my main goal today, I just want to get you guys informed so you guys are aware of everything as far as the move forward. Yeah. So is, is, there, to, so. is there EOC stuff left? Or? Um, it's going to be a, a portion of the percentage because it, any t time we're doing the work as far as like installing the phone system, EOC has a small percentage of that, so they'll get filled out for that. That's why I'll split that out, like I said, too. But, each zone so that can be reversed on based on those parts. But, but the command center for the phone system is going in that network room? Well, the phone is a digital PBX. So, the yeah, the, the network center is going to have the actual PBX 
phone system where everyone hooks in, then there's going to be phones throughout the court also hook into that via the, the network then. So. so that... It'll be a small percentage of the, of the phone bill remaining will be part, part of the EOC. Some will be courtrooms, some will be ring in the courthouse and then that's gone. But if we're going to go ahead and move ahead with the EOC portion of it, that could be installed because that's in the EOC. Um, the phone server is not in the EOC. That's actually going to be in the uh, the server room, I guess. I'm not sure if that's considered EOC. It's a lot of the sheriff's office. Yeah. That's, that's considered EOC. Okay. Well, that's actually where a, a fair amount of my work is to be done: yeah. installing the network switches, installing the servers, getting them prepped, installing the battery backups, the, the power. Where all that cable so. terminates. That's yep. in the EOC. Okay. So yeah, that's where uh, there's a fair amount of work to do there. And there's also the courtroom itself too. That's what I'm concerned about as far as getting in there and getting my work done before any uh, finished work is done on the floor. Otherwise it's kind of a, could take a lot of precaution not to damage anything with heavy equipment coming in there. So, or with scaffolding and so forth, but. Well, that, that part of it is 100% under the legal authority. Okay. That, that, that falls under the, the courtroom bond and, and so we wouldn't have any control over that. Well, we'll pay for the video system and get reimbursed with the courtroom ground. The county almost has to pay for that to get reimbursed. Mm -hmm. But hopefully we'll find out more of us. Time. Like I said, I really want to inform you guys as far as where we're sitting, and then, then we can make decisions as far as the timeline of what's going to be happening going forward. Then, too. Is all the equipment on site? Um, probably about 90% of it. There's some uh, equipment I have stored in my office still. So. Okay. Um, not being stored. So we need to have anything that's been paid for, we need to have on site. Okay. I know there's been some issues with things that have been stored at off-site and on off-premises and, and that any county equipment it needs to be stored at county um, property. Do you, there's, you don't have a timeline in here, do you? No, I heard that as far as the installation, that's, you know, there's so much things up in the air, you know, what like I said, I just want to make you guys aware that. No, but how much time do you think it'll take? Oh, um, the uh, the courtroom will probably take a couple days to get that done, installed. Um, the phone system, you got another. You know, it, it split us through a lot of stuff too. Like we can't be doing training until everybody's in the house doing stuff like that. So, you know, some of the work can be done after people move in. Um, some will be you know, most of it before that, I guess. Uh, the programming and the actual installation of the networking equipment, that's probably going to take about three days, three, four days. They probably get a week and a half, two weeks, maybe. Right. And then, then after that, once you move in, there's probably another, you know, coordinating with the state, that's going to be a day for them to send out technicians, their equipment, coordinating with the phone company, trying to get all the, the lines moved over to the new place and stuff like that. So. So the thirteen thousand two ninety five for the total remaining work, that's labor included? Yeah, that's all that's labor. And then there's there's some network there's some network equipment Yeah, I see that. yeah. But that's mainly with labor. All the equipment's all been paid for already. So Okay. have any questions for Travis? Do you have anything else for us? Uh, yeah, I think that's all there. Really, just like I said, we'll get some forms for us about uh, what we're doing. Well, next month, we'll have to, hopefully, we'll have some kind of a plan. Okay. Right now, we're kind of limbo land. Yeah, I understand that, so.
Okay. Thank you. Alright, have a good day. Yep, you too. South Central. Um, I was just told to um, have the commission review this. So we question what they're good for to justifying their existence. They're trying hard. Got to give me a effort. <laughs> Tax modifiers. You guys read your letter from Linda? I did. I didn't learn anything, but I read it. I, I read the part that, that I needed to read before the schedule of modifiers provided the assessors within the colony the tax director of equalization should obtain approval of the state supervisor of assessments. So once again, it was we don't have control over what we do here. Okay. Abatement or refund of taxes. We have a veteran. City Council has approved it. Mm. This is just a reporting item. We don't have to act on this, do we? I think we do. Mm -hmm. I think we have in the past. Yeah. Okay. Because there's a, I think somewhere it says there's a recommendation from the city that the county approved the mm -hmm. abatement. So. Okay. Um, Emily came in and told me a little bit about it. Um, this lady had purchased it in uh, May, and she is a veteran, so she's wanting that. Um, and so she was saying something about that. Um, would it be from May, from when she got it, and then through that she would get the veterans credit. Is that, am I saying that correctly? Yeah, just date of purchase to the end of the year. Yep. And then have however long she owns it. And then she wants an abate, she wants an abatement or refund from the previous mm -hmm. tax period. Yeah. yeah. So she wants, she wants the proper tax credit retroactive to the prior year. Was it May in 2013 yeah. and 14? 14. 14. 14. Yeah. yeah. So she wants it to be retroactive. Yeah. And she may not even have paid her 14s yet. I don't know. Uh, I don't think it. so. I think that's what um, Emily had said is that okay. she hasn't paid anything, so. Yeah. So I move that we accept the abatement and the property tax credit as presented for Vicki L. Miller. We move by John to approve. How come it's sixty percent? It's dependent on her veteran's disability. Oh. That we approve the veterans abatement of refund or taxes for the two thousand fourteen taxes and going forward. Is there a second to that motion? That's second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. John. Aye. Dale. Aye. Ron. Aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carries. Do they have to, like, prove some kind of disability or not? They have to have a, yeah, if they're getting a veteran's disability, they have to have a letter from the veterans. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I didn't. A certificate of, from Department of Veterans Affairs certifying percentage of service connected disability. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't need, I didn't know if she had a disability. 
Well, that is Jack Zorn's mother, I think, isn't it? Oh, okay. You're probably right then. I did. I couldn't place who it was, but that's a good deal, right? So. And she was. Uh, I know she was. Uh, she was in the service. Yeah, for 20 years. I didn't know she was disabled. I didn't either. So I think you have to pull that stuff up. I'm not filling that out. You're filling that out. Okay. I will do that. <laughs> this employee assistance program, somebody want to help us out there? Sure. Um, the St. Alexis, um, we have a contract with them that any employee is able to go and get some like assistance um, with counseling and all that good stuff. And so this is the contract that I received in the mail. And I, we've been we've been participating in that and it's on an as needed basis I think, right? Yep. Right, so this and, is just a change in the contract. The, if you look at page pay or paragraph two, they're making a change to the contract and that's the change. Oh okay. Oh, they increased it to 26 years because of yeah. Brother Obama. Yeah. This is like mental health services or addiction counseling, that sort of Yeah, yeah. Stuff. Addicted to big government. <laughs> okay. So do we need to approve the addendum to the contract? Yeah, yes sir. I move that we approve the addendum to contract uh, as put forth by St. Lexus Health. The move by John to ex approve the addendum to the contract with St. Lexus Health for the employee assistance program. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay. Um, can we go back off. to the bills real quick? Nope. Um, <laughs> please. Um, Kelly brought up a bill that was that she didn't get to us in time, and um, if she, it's not paid by the twenty eighth, then the contract is um, no longer good or something. So if I can get that. To This appears to be the WSI coverage for people that 
have to perform community service. Um, janitorial outdoor activities such as lawn work, painting, indoor activities such as painting, stacking shelves, and general indoor labor. So if somebody as part of a sentence for some violation has to do community service in the city, in the county, this is the WSI coverage for them. So I don't think it would be in our best interest to let that coverage lapse. What was your the amount is $250 and the term is 3115 three to 22816. So it, it's an annual premium for the for workforce workforce safety insurance. Mm -hmm. So, I guess I would entertain a motion that we approve that voucher. I have moved that we uh, approve the workman compensation insurance. Um, for the in inmate work release program as presented. The move by John to approve the voucher for $250 for WSI coverage on uh, inmate, inmate work release program. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. John, yeah. and Dale, aye. Ron, aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carries. And the to and Kelly for being charged. This letter just came on the 2nd of February, unless he got one before, I don't know. Huh? Okay, next thing that I have on the agenda is House Bill 1459 hearing. Um, I got an email from Don Vigasaw this morning. Um, there is a hearing at the Capitol a week from today at 9.30 a.m. in the Prairie Room. Don is encouraging participation from Griggs County since if you guys haven't been following 1459, it, it is a bill that's been introduced in the House to change the method that municipalities, political subdivisions create building authorities. It's, it's kind of a roundabout way of trying to restrict 14, or 57, 15, 59, which in my mind, they would be, we would all be better served if they would just fix 14, you know, or 57, 15, 59, but it's probably not so easy to do. The, the original intent of, of that section of the century code is probably okay. If somebody had a building in town and the county wished to lease it for 10 years, that's what it gave them the ability to do. Yeah. It's morphed into this secondary funding source. If you present a, a bond issue to, to the taxpayers and, and they don't like the option or the the proposal that's put forth to the taxpayers and they vote it down then that's a, now they use it to go around the taxpayers that that wasn't the original intent of the of the statute but 
with that said, what they're attempting to do then is to restrict the formation of a building authority by municipality to a vote of the people. They can't just do it in with a simple majority of the governing body of the municipality. The problem that I see with, or one problem that I see with it is they've, they've, the way this is written, the building authority can be created with a vote of a majority of the qualified electors. So over here you have a bond issue which requires a 60% vote. And over here, you have another methodology of funding through the building authority, which only requires a 50% vote. So my, my concern then would be that Same more point. funding would be, that's exactly would right. migrate to that form of funding. Yes, sir, exactly right. Just and, just... and create unneeded building authorities when if they would just go do the right thing and present an option that the voters could live with they could do it the way it was meant to be done so i'm going to go out there to this hearing and speak on behalf of myself as a citizen you know don don would have liked the commission to make a statement at that hearing, but I didn't know that until he sent me this email today, and I am not prepared my statement for the committee. So I don't think you guys are in a position to have me draw my own statement and endorse it when you don't even get to see it ahead of time. So, you know... As commissioners, you're certainly welcome to come with or go out there on your own or whatever and speak as a citizen. Um, I don't know that the county commission of Greeks County is going to have a statement to make there. But, but I wanted to let everybody know that this is in the works. <clears throat> you know, two years ago there was a bill, and that was House Bill 1486, and that one would have done away with the ability of the building authority to utilize 57, 15, 59 altogether. And that passed the House by 86 to 11 um, yeah, and so. shot down by the Senate. This one here, you, you hit on the, on the problem with it is that there's always been, there's always been the, a certain amount of uh, people that believe that a 60% margin in order to levy taxes was unfair, that it should have been a straight majority vote. This one here will do just that. You, you won't have it going before a general election anymore to and require a 60% vote. Why would they? Why don't they, they just go and lower the standard by 10%. Standard 10%. Yeah. Now, whether or not Don Bigasaw is on board with this left-handed way of getting around the 60% law, or he just thinks that this is this is a step in the right direction. I can't speak for him. As far as a statement from the building of the, from the Griggs Colony, I, I think that the eventual outcome of this whole mess we're in is going to be a very clear statement of what should happen to these projects. Now that's going to be too late to influence this this process, but uh, I'm I'm against this bill here just because it, 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 it takes away the it takes away the the sixty percent margin and gives them a way around that and, and I for the most part they're not going to form a building authority if we have responsible people in office. They're just going to do it if they if they're not listening to their citizens. So I, I see both sides of it. And, and I don't I don't know which But as many times as this has been used throughout the last twenty years it's obvious that this isn't the first elected body that has approached. You're right. The majority of the time that, that I mean, we're the exception here in Riggs Colony, 
But the majority of the time that they used the building authority approach to get around the vote of the people was when that vote fell between the 50 and 60 percent margins. Where it, where it would have made it on a straight majority vote. And then it, then it saved, I mean, the school down in North Central, that one was by a majority vote it passed, but it didn't make the 60 percent margin. So people felt vindicated in, in, to go ahead with the building authority approach. Now, in our instance, it never did even get that. I mean, it failed at the majority vote. They still decided to go ahead with it. Uh, so I don't think it accomplishes much by what they're doing. I don't think they're solving the problem. I think they're just giving an end run a way around a process that we have in place that was put in place for a reason so that we could have a little bit more margin when it comes to raising taxes. But it tightens it up tighter than it is today. <clears throat> I think uh, I think Don's statement when I was complaining about the language in this in this house bill was that you even you have to eat an elephant one bite at a time. <laughs> and we're not gonna get to where you wanna go in one step. <laughs> <laughs> As a Republican, yes, he did. Yeah, I'd rather. I'd rather. <laughs> right, the cop out. No, I'd, rather no, stand, I'd, I'd rather stand an elephant, let him run me over, than than compromise with him. You know. But that's again, I I don't want to make a statement on it, but I, I that's you know you know anybody's point of view on it. I just think it's I think it's a cheap way around the law. And they're promoting it as something else. It's pretty hard. This whole thing is about the arrogance of elected officials. But it's pretty hard to go to Bismarck and stand in front of a bunch of elected officials that you want to do, that you want to do what you want done, and tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that would be getting off on the right foot. <laughs> it, I mean, this whole thing is like, well, since you guys don't know what's good for you, we're gonna make, we're gonna, we're gonna do it on your behalf, the, and then you're gonna pay for it. The, the I mean, the that's the whole the, idea behind the building authority. You, 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 you are either too lazy or too inept to present a proposal. That was palatable to the voters. Yeah. Well, do you, you know, you've been reading, you've been keeping track of it, but just so that everybody knows that the chief proponent of this bill and the, and the expert in the field that they've been using to testify in favor of this has been the bonding attorney that handled this project here. So if anybody thinks that this is going to lessen their business, wrong. <laughs> so. Yeah, so. But, but, but I, I don't, I don't agree that that. I mean, what what it exposes, what what makes people do the right thing, is shining a glaring light on it. Not got, not getting by to get by. Okay. But I have faith you'll do the right thing, Craig. All right. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to tell them I was sent out there by a, just wait till the a bald the headed baron of Benford. <laughs> just, wait, just, just wait till the end of the speech before you get held. They'll listen to you right up until that point. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. All right. Good new, old courthouse, new courthouse. I don't know where this one falls, but. Mediation. Mediation, yeah. But, but should we wait to do that in the executive session? We've got this thing from construction engineers here. Starting with page 46 or something. Here. Yeah. And that was our payment. 46 is where we sent the payment and requested uh, the 63,000. And then construction engineers sent on 47, they sent a revised courthouse payment summary. And it's not correct. They, they come through here and, they, and, and if you look at their letter then, that's associated with this, 
On page 45, they come to the contention that the county owes 274,417. They own the all, all, all the costs associated with finishing the project. The problem with, and then if you, the problem with it is on 47 is they gave, they give total credit for the $413,000 to the building authority. That check did not come from the building authority. They took it upon their own to check with outside sources and that they, they that the bank of North Dakota had reimbursed Griggs County for that four hundred and thirteen thousand dollars, but they neglected to then give credit for the two hundred and ninety thousand dollars that Griggs County paid back to the Bank of North Dakota. So when that was called to their attention, if you go to page fifty one here is the spreadsheet now not giving credit to either entity, just showing the amount remaining of the 274417 and there was an email explaining the mistake that they made. So they no longer take a stance that either party owes any certain amount. They still stand by with the, the premise that there's been $1,011,000 completed to date on the EOC portion of the project and $1,920,000 completed to date on the courthouse portion, but they no longer make any any claim as to who paid what on, a, on and or who owes what. Or who owes what, that's right. So so now we're, we're back to the 274, 417, 41 is what's owed. We have the certified invoices that are signed by John Steen and then are signed by a notary public certifying the amounts owed. And the amounts owed are 142, hang on here, 142, 361.81, that's what we paid. That was a certified amount from construction engineers. The amount that was certified to be paid by the building authority was 274 417 41. How in the world did they ever reverse that when it already sworn to it and had an affidavit signed that these were the certified amounts only? Yeah. Who only knows? But we, we did the right thing. We paid what they said we were owed, and that's what we need to stick by. There, there's this, this page 47 is garbage. This, none of this holds any any validity. So we'll go, I think we should just go forward and, and we paid what they said, here's the certified amounts, we paid it. We don't know what, where we go from there. And we have an email from them saying page 47 is null and void and go back. To Basically, yeah, you've seen that, I think. I don't know if I have those. Okay, but, uh, Troy's got it. Do we need anything more? Do we need a letter from them saying that? Or? Well, it is a, it is a, a letter in the form of email. Troy, you've got that, right? I think it was addressed. Uh, I am giving the answer to me. I just don't want to call it off anymore. from John Eikoff. It says we forwarded a copy of our payment summary dated 2215, which had data relative to building authority Griggs County payments. We have been informed that there may be discrepancies for amounts paid on behalf of the two funding agencies. We are sorry for the confusion. We are sorry if this has caused confusion. Attaches a revised payment summary which shows the balance owed for the work completed is 274417. 
<clears throat> and that's the spreadsheet that's on the back page. Right. I, I, I make a motion that we add that email to the meeting minutes. Make a public comment on the meeting minutes. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank been moved and second that we include this where with with this with the meeting minutes with the meeting minutes that we include the the text in giant John Eikhoff's February 3rd email is there any discussion is there any discussion is there any further discussion seeing none will proceed to vote all in favor say aye, aye. opposed same sign Motion carries. So you can print that off. Okay. Page 48, 49, and 50 is, is from Connie regarding. Payments on the project outside of construction engineers and who paid what. At it briefly. I didn't have time to go scrutinize it, but I did see one omission on here. Um, Twenty-seven fourteen Riggs County wrote a check for fifty-five thousand eight hundred and twenty-three dollars and seventy cents to Jamestown Communications. So has that been turned? Has that been turned in for reimbursement, County? Isn't that on here? I I didn't see it, but maybe I missed. Maybe I missed it. It has been turned into yes, and it's been questioned because they only reimbursed part of it. Okay, what? Well, um, I don't see it on here. Well, there's the 1115 check to Jamestown. What, what was the date on that? What was the date? 1115, 2013. What? Okay, the, this, uh, this check was written 22714. Okay, I'll check in there. Do you have a check number? I do. Um, 17768. Zero one seventy seven sixty eight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. For the radios, we bought a grant. I don't know what it's for. Didn't Bob show up with the bill for radios at one point that he had a grant for that was probably, but it's still money that was paid by Griggs County outside of, outside of the construction engineers to this project and. and the radios that wouldn't be for the project, but I'll check into it and find out. Okay, that's similar. I mean, but I didn't go through, and, and we, we need to scrutinize it more thoroughly. I had a question on page 42 of the mediation agreement. It says a representative of the insurance carrier will be there and will have full authority to settle on behalf of the insurer. I think that's a, I think it's just a form letter at all. Well, I read that also. But who's, which insurance carrier are they talking about? Or whose insurance carrier? Well, the county is because the county hasn't made a claim to the insurance reserve fund. So well, what, are they saying construction engineers insurance carrier will have full authority to decide the matter? No. 
Well, it could be read that way. Well, yeah. I think, like I said, I think this is just a form agreement. There's just a boilerplate form that they send out. I don't think that. Um, what page are you looking at? Uh, 42, under a 10. Right. That's right. Yeah, yeah under a 10 instead of uh, last one. I read it that a representative of the insurance carrier will attend and will have full authority to settle on behalf of the insurer. And if that's construction engineer's insurance area, we sure as hell don't want to agree to that. But. Right. So even though this is a formula, we don't agree to it, right? Or how do we say we don't agree to this formula? We're not even a party to it. But we actually, we haven't been, really, we're not named as a party in this letter. So it means absolutely nothing? I don't know why we even got it. It got, okay. it got, this thing got forwarded to us from from the legal representation of the building authority. Look at the look at the heading on the letter. Scott Landa and Lee Grossman. We're not even included. Yeah. Construction engineers versus Griggs County Building Authority. Somebody needs to straighten that out if we are a party to it. And if we're not a party to it, then we don't need to. I mean, we need to prepare for this if we are a party to it. Yeah. Did you call anybody? Did you? I mean, I haven't talked to anybody. I, I sent an email to Grossman. Yeah, because on 42 it says that the participants agree to abide by the following rules. Well, we're not a participant, Ron. Well, we, uh, we're, we agreed to mediation. Uh, doesn't that make us a participant? And it, it may have been, they may have overlooked that. Well, us, but I, I don't, we did agree to mediation. We agreed to, to the 3rd of March for mediation. So that's, that makes us a participant, doesn't it? Well, maybe since we're paid up on the EOC or not mediation material anymore. <laughs> we don't qualify. Well, we, we're still part of the contract, though. We're right. still part yeah. of that whole $274,000. I'm, I'm well, just saying, right. we've never received this letter other than got right. forwarded yeah. to us from Grossman. Grossman's not our lawyer, and he's not the mediator. The mediator needs to know that something is amiss here. Yeah. That's my feeling. But it, yeah, as, as far as Ron's concerned, right, it says a representative of the insurance carrier who may be interested in the outcome of mediation will personally attend the mediation and will have full authority to settle on behalf of the insurer. That means on, on behalf of their company, not on our behalf. Right. So, so they're, they're saying if, he, if, he, <coughs> if we bring an insurance agent, he's authorized by the insurance company to settle. Right. He doesn't have to say over us. He is authorized that if if the mediators if if he's our insurance company and we say and we say can you settle for ten thousand dollars he's authorized to, to speak for the insurer. Yeah, but it says a representative of the insurance carrier. Of the insurance carrier. Well, that, keep reading. But construction engineers has an insurance carrier. But but this is just a boilerplate form that just but, that they send out in case they, there is an insurance company that's involved. Be, that it should say the insurance carrier for somebody. No, it's say it's saying that the representative of for the insurance carrier has the authority to settle on behalf of his boss. Well, who is the insurance carrier? It doesn't, it doesn't it matter. Doesn't matter any of them. Here, this is the word insurer, a representative for the insurance carrier, the agent has the ability to settle on the behalf of the insurer, which is the company. Okay. They don't want it, they don't want an agent there agreeing to something and then not being able to back it up. Okay. Yeah. That's all I say. Okay. But Troy's right, we're not even naming it so far. Part of the mediation, yeah, in the future, in the litigation, and that's that's standard. And we won't subpoena records for the mediation, but we could subpoena records for the litigation. The way I read this, number two, but, but not from the mediation. The mediation not, is a settlement conference where, yeah. where that's not admissible. But, but we could still, if it goes to litigation, then we can still subpoena records. 
records from from the building at 30 and, yeah, and see, construction engineers. Yeah. yeah, outside of this mediation. Yeah, outside of the mediation. They right. Outside of the mediation. Yeah. Yeah. That's but the mediation record, that's that's a settlement conference, yeah. so it, it, it wouldn't be something that's useful. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and Am I correct, Jamie, in, in saying that this type of mediation, the mediator never arrives at a settlement. The settlement is arrived at by all three parties mutually, and it, unless that can happen, there's no statement that comes from the mediator right. after the fact. If, they, so, if, they can't, if we can't reach an agreement between parties, it just... Right, so, so the mediator's never going to say, well, I agree with this part of here, but these guys are being unreasonable. Right. That, that doesn't matter. That, that's an arbitration. There's a difference between arbitration right. and mediation. And arbit arbitrators are just a third party that comes in and makes a decision and, and would award Greg's County the money or, or, or say yeah, Greg's County doesn't owe any money and the building authority owes money and, and construction engineers and how that money. Mediation is mutual for third party that comes in and tries to um, facilitate the discussion to reach a settlement. And, and, and if it fails, that'll, the statement from the mediator will, will be just that, that we were unable to reach consensus right. Right. to further and furtherance of the of this dispute. Yeah. Right. And it, it is the procedure that we need to go to with you to, um, you know, it's, it's the remedy that we have to go through before, you know, ultimately if there's litigation, it's the contract remedy that we need to do to, to satisfy the contract to, to reach the, the stage of the litigation if it goes that far. Okay, so so construction engineers, this, this dispute is about whether who owes construction, uh, about paying construction engineers what's their old. Right. And being that a contract doesn't specify who owes what, it's $2.9 million each one of them signed it. Right. The only way this is going to come to a successful outcome is, is if both parties agree that the amounts that construction engineers apply to the projects are the responsibility of the two entities. Correct. Right. So we've already we have already we've already agreed that we owed the hundred and forty two thousand dollars and we paid it. Right. And I I guess I, I know what the arguments are gonna be on both sides of Sure, you know what arguments are going to be on both sides. And but that's the, the argument isn't that argument doesn't take place in the mediation. It, it I mean, that's not no, no. Not. I mean, it's it's like I said, it's a facilitated discussion to right. try to reach a settlement. Right. Hard to believe it's going to take eight hours. Well, I, I mean. What can we? What concession can we give? We've paid what? I mean, they certainly didn't certify those invoices. Mm -hmm. I think we probably want to go away before we discuss any strategy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't, okay. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't yeah. think there is a strategy. I, I think. I mean, I'm fine with them. We paid what we're over. We were billed. What more can you do? But Troy's right until we're actually named in the in the mediation. I don't know what we should do. Yeah. Well, I and we're according to that, that letter, we're not a party to it. Which letter? Though? The the letter that we got from from Jack and Marcello and our consultant law firm. That wasn't addressed to us. It was between those two parties that are invited to. We have agreed to do mediation March third, but the mediator didn't invite us to the party. Mm -hmm. Do you want to contact them, Jamie, and find out what's going on? Yeah, I can. I'll actually send a. I, I think the first thing I'm going to do is send an email to Scott Hunter and say, which is the construction engineer's attorney, and say, hey, are you guys in agreement that we don't want any money since we're not invited to the party? See what they say. You could send an email to Lee Grossman saying, we wish you the best of luck. <laughs> 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 well, I think the reason we email to Lee Grossman are pretty good.
Oder? Unless you guys have more under new courthouse, old courthouse. Um, next meeting, I'll sit down with you guys and if we're part of that mediation, sit down with board executive session and strategize what we're going to do. If you guys want, want to, um, I'll attend. Um, that sort of thing. So, we, so we're on the same page and that gives me two weeks to get ready for the mediation. Well, the, the way it looks to me, at least three people are going to need to go if we are going to get invited. Otherwise, how are, we, how are you going to make a decision unless we have a meeting and... Um, I think it's Dave, you have to have enough people there to make a decision. Right. So I have to be there with the power to make the decision. The only other way to do it would be to assign somebody to represent the board or the county and have a, a range. But that limits you if you end up outside of that range and you can't make a deal. Um, and that wouldn't work either because we'd have to make that decision at an open meeting and take a vote on it, which That's right. wouldn't work. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have to notice that there's a meeting taking place, and then we'll have a separate room there, and, and then we'll have to call the meeting to order, and then it, and then go to executive session, and then come back over to the session session, and then we'll then go back to the meeting. But so then they'll have to be there all day, then, right? To record the executive meetings and the non. She's session. looking forward to it. Yeah, I imagine so. <laughs> Has to be all our, I guess. What's that? <laughs> Has to be all our, I yeah. guess. <laughs> um, I, I should, I guess I have an appellate brief due for the walk case, for like the day before that meeting on the 20th, so I'll be done with that and be ready to go on this next thing. Okay. Yeah, because we've only got one more regular meeting before the mediation. Right. I guess I have one quick thing. Okay. I'm still trying to work on getting you to go over back over to the old courthouse. Oh. Um, but like I said, I've got that appeal that I've been working on, and, and that kind of took precedence from the old Now, the biggest thing is that office in this courthouse was left kind of in shambles. Mm -hmm. and right. I, I have to figure everything I haven't had an opportunity to do that. Okay, that's something Ryan Pfeiffer or somebody could do probably to move, move the junk out of there. That's well, garbage. I think it's files I'm going to have to go through and oh. sort and, and get them put in the right areas. Yeah, okay. Um, so I, I would certainly wish someone could help me, but that's something that Christine and I are going to have to do.
the ball, but he moved it right down in you. Been moved by Ron, seconded by John to adjourn. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries, meeting. Pat. Pat. At 2.52 p.m. this sixth day of February 2015. Next meeting will be 1 p.m. February 20th at 1 p.m.